Hey guys, uh, it's Mr. A. Welcome to um, another edition of, in geometry. We're in section 1.6 today and we're going to talk about two-dimensional figures. Okay, so let's get started. First of all, our objectives. Uh, we're going to identify and name polygons. And then secondly, we're going to find the perimeter, the circumference, and the area of these two-dimensional figures. All right, so first of all, polygons. What's a polygon? Okay, well, take a look at this here. Um, all right, over here, a polygon is a closed figure uh, formed by a finite number of coplanar segments called sides. Okay, so first of all, take a look here. A side is basically just a line segment. Okay, so here, side GH, if you notice, remember the little symbol up here for the line segment? So it's just a, a line segment, a straight line. And, um, and the main other thing here to notice is that each side will intersect only two other sides and only at their endpoint. Um, and so if you notice here side GH and side HJ, they come together at their endpoint, which is H. Um, and the points where they come together there, that's the vertex. Okay, so that's what's talking about down here. The vertex of the polygon um, is where those two lines come together. So they've labeled here vertex J. And we call the vertex by the letter of the point that it's at. So vertex J, this would be vertex H over here, uh, and so forth. Okay, but the key thing there is, again, it has to connect with the other sides at the endpoints and only at their endpoints. Okay, that's kind of the key thing there. The other thing uh, that's that's uh, good to know here is how you name a polygon. It's named by the letters of its vertices. Vertices is the plural for vertex, and um, it's written in consecutive order. So, like here, they they've got this called polygon G H J K L M. So notice it goes G H J K L M. It goes right in order. If I wanted to, I could I could call this like M L K J H G. As long as I go in order, I would not want to say G, K, J, L, H, M or something like that. Uh, that would not be correct. I have to go in order when I name those. Okay, moving on. All right, so some examples. All right, so we want to look at some examples. What would a polygon look like? We, you know, we saw one there kind of uh, in the example, but, um, you know, anything, and I, now again, I apologize if I can't draw these very well, but... Um, let's say we have something like this. Okay, that would be a polygon. That would be a triangle. And again, I may not be able to draw these lines perfectly straight, but so bear with me. Um, you know, let's say you have something like this. And that's, these are all solid lines here, even though I'm, okay, those are all straight lines. They're all connected. Um, you know, maybe you have something like this, you know, Notice how they're all straight lines and they're all connected. Um, so, you know, you could get a number of things here. I, I'm going to be adventurous here. All right. So, like a star. Okay. <laughs> it's not perfect, but it's it's something. Those are all examples. You notice, again, I, I'm not doing a great job drawing them because I'm using this fake pen here. But um, But they're all straight lines and they're all connected. All right. Let's look at something that would not be a polygon. Okay, some examples that are not polygons. Okay, so for example, one thing I said was they have to be line segments. And so if you have a shape like a circle, that's not a polygon. That's not considered a polygon because it's it doesn't have a straight edge. It's a circle. Um, what else? Uh, anything else that's got any kind of a curved side, you know, even if you have a straight side and then you have another curved side like that, that's not a polygon. Uh, because all the all of them have to be sides; they can't be curved. Um, so, like, let's see. Or another thing is, if you have, let's say, you have a shape that comes up like this, that's not a polygon. Why? Because remember that the lines have to, the line segments have to meet up with the next one at the end point. And so this one went in here to not to the end point of this other line, it went right in the middle. So that would not be a polygon. Um, also, if it doesn't close it back in, so like if you have 
a drawing like this where it doesn't close, it leaves a gap there, that would not be a polygon either. Or the other thing that I'll mention here is if you have something like this that crosses, you notice this is not considered a polygon either because this line segment here, it joins at the end and the end with that one, but it crosses in the middle and it can't cross in the middle like that. So that's another thing that can't happen. So here are a few examples of what are polygons and what are not polygons, okay? All right, next thing we need to talk about is concave and convex, all right? Different types of polygons. They can be considered concave or convex. So um, here's, here's kind of the definition. If a line um, containing each side, if a line is drawn, okay, on each side of the polygon, if any of those lines pass through the interior of the polygon, then it's concave. So if not, it's convex. So let's, let's kind of look at, again, I'll draw, try to draw some examples here best I can. Um, so let's say we have an example here. Uh, let me, I'll make, let me, let me draw this, okay, as best I can again. Okay, so there's a triangle. And if you, you know, as this says up here, if you could draw a line through each side, now we, these are just line segments that make this, um, that make this polygon, but if you just continued the line, I'm going to try to draw some dotted lines here if I can. You know, if you continue that line out, and then you continue this line out, and you continue this line out, and that line continues out, and this line continues out. Do any of those go in the inside? Like, do any of those cross in here anywhere? No, they all go, they're all on the outside of that uh, shape. So this would be considered convex, okay? Because all of the, if you draw a line, none of these dotted lines will cross anywhere in between. All right, let's look at uh, another example here. Let's say, okay, like if you ever watch like any Star Trek, you know, they have like their badge looks something maybe like this. You know, like the Star Trek logo, you know, beam me up. All right, oop, okay, that was kind of a mistake there. Hold on a second. I am going to try to um, erase that. Oops, I didn't do it. There we go. Okay. Um, and so here's here's the shape. Let's let's do the same thing. Draw, continue the line segment with a dotted line. That one will continue that way. You know, like up here, you'll have one that'll continue that way. This one will continue that way. So far, okay. But look at this line in here. What happens if you continue that line? It goes like that, and this line continues through there. Guess what? These lines here continued on and went, if they continued on, they would go inside of that shape. So that would be considered concave. Now, the kind of the easy way to remember this is, like the way I always think about it, is if you look at the shape and it looks like one side is caved in, then it's concave. You look at here, look at this part right here, that looks like that got caved in. And so it got mushed in there. And so if it's concave, then one side will be caved in. That's how I think about it. Okay, moving on. All right, polygons can also be classified by the number of sides, okay? How many sides they have, and we can call them certain things. So let's take a look at this neat table here. Um, and some of these you should be pretty well aware of. If you have three sides, that's considered a triangle. Four sides would be a quadrilateral. You might have heard that before. Quadrilaterals would be squares or rectangles, uh, things like that. Uh, five sides would be a pentagon. Six sides would be a hexagon. Seven would be a heptagon. Eight, you might be familiar with this, an octagon, right? UFC, octagon. And, um, and then nine would be called a nonagon. 10 is a decagon, like decade is 10 years, so a decagon. Um, 11 would be a hendecagon. I don't have any good thing with that. I don't know if 
10s or 11 years old or something. I don't know. Um, all right, 12 would be a dodecagon. After that, what they do is just, and you know, we've got N written here for N-gon. So you would just say if you had 13, you would say it's a 13-gon. Or if it was 14 sides, it would be a 14-gon. So you don't have any special names after that. Just whatever it is, 20, a 20-gon. Okay, so um, once you get past 12, you just say the number and, uh, and you know, gone. All right. Other ways that we can classify polygons, we can call a polygon equilateral. Okay, if, it's, if it is a polygon which all sides are congruent. So if all sides are congruent, then that's equilateral. Equa means like equal. And lateral would be like sides. So equilateral, all sides are the same. So that that could be a triangle, um, you know, uh, actually a square would be equilateral because all its sides are the same. Um, another way that we can look at that is uh, equiangular. All right, that's where the angles are congruent. Um, and then a regular polygon is, number one, it's, it's convex. We talked about convex polygons um, so it's not caved in on one side but it has both equilateral and equiangular it's both of those okay so that would be regular all the sides are the same all the angles are the same okay that would be equal uh, that would be regular sorry equiangular and equilateral and if it's irregular that just means it's not regular that's all okay so those are other ways that we can classify polygons all right so let's look at a, a couple of examples here kind of using what we've just talked about um, so first thing here, here's our example. The um, we're going to class up, name this polygon by the number of sides, and classify it as convex or concave, and then regular or irregular. All right, so let's take a look at this. First of all, by the number of sides. Well, it's one, two, three, four sides. So what would four sides be called? Did you say quadrilateral? Good. Okay, so it's quadrilateral. Um, is this convex or concave? All right, is any is any side here, is it caved in anywhere around this? No, it's not caved in anywhere. So that, that means this would be convex. And it, is it regular or irregular? Well, remember, regular meant it has to have equal sides and equal angles. And if you look here, remember the little lines? Remember, if you have one line and one line, that means they're the same. Well, look at one line, two, three lines, four lines. What this is telling us that all four of these sides are different. So this would not be regular. It would be irregular. Okay. So it's quadrilateral, it's convex, and it's irregular. All right, next one. Okay, so this one looks like an arrow or something. So first of all, how many sides does it have? Well, Let's, let's look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides. Okay, so you remember what nine sides was? All right. If you said, I'm not even sure if I'm spelling this right, uh, nonagon, you're correct. Nonagon, nine sides. All right, is it convex or concave? Well, if you look like this area right over here, that got caved in. Also, this side over here, it got caved in. And so, in other words, if you were to continue this line, like right here, it would go into the inside of, of that shape. So that would be uh, concave. And then lastly, is it regular or irregular? And if you notice here, like there's a bunch of little uh, hash marks that are one, so those are all the same. But... Here's a couple that are two marks, and here's a couple that are three. So in order to be um, regular, they'd all have to be the same. But the other thing is, remember, a regular um, polygon also has to be convex, and we were concave. So either way, that's going to be irregular. Okay? All right. Example three. What about this one? Ooh, that one looks good. Okay. How many sides? Number one, number two, number three. There are three sides. So this is a 
triangle. All right, is it convex or concave? Is there any side that got caved in anywhere? No, it didn't. So that would be convex. And lastly, remember, is it regular or irregular? Regular means all the sides are the same, all the angles are the same. If you notice, the hash marks here are all one hash mark, so that means all the sides are the same. And then remember how we had the little arc in the angle there? And all those, it's just one arc, so that means all the angles are the same, and so this would be regular. All the sides are the same, and all the angles are the same as well. They're all congruent. Okay. All right. Good. Perimeter, circumference, and area. All right. The perimeter, if you notice here, it's the sum of the lengths of the sides of a polygon. So in other words, the perimeter is just the distance. It's just the distance around the edge of the polygon. Okay. So it's just how far around the outside is it? That's the perimeter. Circumference is really the same thing as perimeter, except it's just for circles, okay? Cir circumference is, oh, circumference is for circles. Mm. Um, so, but it's still the same thing. It means the same thing as perimeter. It's just the distance around the edge of the circle, okay? So perimeter and circumference basically mean the same thing. It's just that circumference is when you're dealing with a circle. And then area is uh, the number of square units um, that needed that are needed to cover the inside surface of a figure. So not around the outside edge, but what's in the middle. So like if you had, uh, I'm going to draw a little rectangle here. So, you know, again, the, the perimeter would be what's around the edge that I just drew, but the area would be the inside part. Oops. Okay. That I'm shading. So that'd be all the inside part that I'm shading there. Okay. All right. So here's um, some of the ways, some of the little formulas and things that you can use to, um, uh, to, to find perimeter circumference area with some of the different shapes. And so I'll kind of talk about these and we'll just do a couple examples and that'll be it. All right. So first of all, um, let's see. Uh, oh, couldn't, couldn't find my pencil there. All right. First of all, triangle. Um, you notice, we'll talk about the perimeter first on these. Perimeter is just the outside edge. So B, that's this side down here. And C, that's that side. And D. So we just add up the outside, all the th uh, three outside edges on the triangle. Just add them up. That's your perimeter. On the square, now these square, all sides are the same, but you just do the same thing. You add up each side. So side plus side plus side plus side. Or since they're all the same, you could just say 4S. Uh, the rectangle, you know, we talk about length and width. Well, remember, if this is the length in a rectangle, this will also be a length, and that will also be the width. Okay? And so, and so um, when you add these up, it'll be just L plus W plus L plus W. You just add those all up. Or again, since these two L's are the same, you could say 2L. And these two W's are the same. You can say 2W. So uh, that's another way you can do it. And then the circle is, um, there's a little formula there you may or, not, may or may not remember. But for the circumference, which again is the same thing as a perimeter, it's just pi, pi times diameter. You know, diameter, remember, is the distance all the way across the middle of the circle, going through the mid, middle point there. The radius is from the middle point out to the edge. And that's half of the, the diameter. So if you say pi times diameter, I usually remember that one, but you could also say pi times uh, two pi r because two times r is the same thing as d or diameter. Uh, so those two are really the same. I usually just remember pi times diameter. And if I have the radius, then I'll just, uh, I'll just double that and put it in this formula. Okay, those are some of the formulas. Then um, with the area formulas, Remember with a triangle, you may or may not remember this, one half base times height. The base is the bottom part here. And the height, you notice how they've got it drawn. It's from the base all the way up to the, the topmost spot. So you would just do this number, the B times the H, and then 
times 0.5 or divide by 2, same thing. Uh, for the square, you just go one side times another side, side times side or side squared, which is really the same thing as with a rectangle here. You just go length times width, length times width is area. And then lastly, in a circle, uh, the area is pi times r squared. Okay, so notice a little bit different there. Here, circumference is pi times diameter or 2 pi r. Area is pi r squared. So uh, kind of remember that difference there. Sometimes it's hard to remember which one's which there. All right, let's look at a few examples how we use that. All right, we've got a rectangle. Okay, we want to find the perimeter and the area. Okay, so first of all, the perimeter. Remember, we're just going to add up the sides here. So I'm going to go 4.6 plus 2.3. Oh, what are, what are the other ones? Well, remember, this one up here is also going to be 4.6, and this one over here is going to also be 2.3. So we just add those again. Okay, so we've got all those. Let me add those up. So 4.6 plus 2.3 plus 4.6 plus 2.3. And it looks like I get 13.8, it looks like is what I'm getting here. And since it's perimeter, what are the units going to be there? Centimeters, just centimeters because it's a distance, so we just go with centimeters. It's kind of cut off the M there, but you get it. All right, and then area. So remember, area is just length times width, so I'm going to do 4.6 times 2.3. Just going to multiply those together. So 4.6 times 2.3. And in that case, I get 6.9. No, that's not right. I did, I did the wrong thing. 4.6 times 2.3. I added them. 10.58, uh, it looks like. What's going to be the units of measurement there? Well, remember, since in area, it's square units because we, you know, multiplied centimeters times centimeters. So that would be centimeters squared or square centimeters. Okay, so there's one example with a rectangle. All right, next. Ooh, a, a circle. Okay, so we got to remember kind of our formulas here. So first of all, let's talk about circumference equals pi times diameter. Da. Ah. Okay. Let me go back here. All right. Uh, circumference equals pi times diameter. Or you could say circumference equals 2 times pi times r. Either one of those. All right. So um, if we have this 4 inches right here, that is the radius, okay? Because it's indicating that it's only going from the middle point here out to the edge. So that's the radius. So if I was going to plug it into this formula here, I would say circumference equals pi times the diameter would just be this doubled, 8. And then on my calculator, I would just type in 8 times the pi button. And you're going to have to round this because of the pi here. But uh, I ended up with 25 point one three. I'm going to go to two decimal places. All right, so since this is circumference, remember that's the distance around the outside edge, it's just inches. So that would be 25.13 inches. All right, what about the area? Remember the area equals pi r squared. So again, we just go look over here. I've got four is the radius. So this is going to be pi times 4 squared. Now remember, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, remember the order of operations. You have to do exponents before you do multiplying. So we have to go 4 times 2 first, which would be what? 4 squared, not 4 times 2, 4 squared, which would be 16. So we, we do the 16 there first, then we can go times pi. So we could just go 16 
times pi. And that's going to give me, I, again, we're going to have to round this a little bit here. Um, the area would equal 50 point, and then it's going to round to 2, 7. And that will, again, since this is area, remember that's square units. And so that's going to be inches squared. Ooh, I don't know why I just made that circle go away, but we're done with it. Okay, next. Oh, it's back. Okay, next. All right, find the area of this figure. This is our last one. We've got a triangle. And all we're going to do is find the area because that's the that's the one. It doesn't have any numbers out here on the edge over here. So we're going to just find the area of this one. So remember the area of a triangle is what? One half base times height. All right, so what is the base? The base is this number down here. So that's four. And the height is six. So we're just going to type that in. You might be able to do that in your head. Four times six is 24. And then times one half would just be 12. So the area would be 12. What would it be? Since we're talking about area, remember, it's the units squared, so in this case it would be centimeters squared. Area would be 12 centimeters squared. Okay, well that should do it. Um, thanks for watching today, um, and uh, we'll see you next time uh, for some more geometry. Bye.